In this video, I'll start looking at the nerve supply to the upper limb. To do that, I'll be building on some theory that I covered in a previous video, and you can find that just here. Now that video was looking at a different region, so you will have to imagine that every time I say lower limb, I actually mean upper limb. But other than that, the exact same theory applies here. The nerves to the upper limb primarily originate from nerve roots C5 to T1. These leave the spinal cord and form a plexus, the brachial plexus, before sending peripheral nerves out into the limb. To draw this out, we need to start with the root. So I'll add these here, imagining that they've just left the vertebral column. Now at this point you may be wondering why, when we have 7 cervical vertebrae, do we have 8 cervical spinal nerves? The reason for this is that nerves in the cervical region are named after the vertebra below, but the thoracic spinal nerves are named after the vertebra above. This leaves an orphan nerve between C7 and T1, and this is our 8th cervical nerve. Just like a tree, the roots come together and form trunks. C5 and 6 form an upper trunk, C8 and T1 form a lower trunk, and C7 continue, like the tall loner it is, to form a middle trunk. Each of these trunks then split into two divisions. Now at this point we'll see a large vessel, the axillary artery, lying amongst the structures of the brachial plexus. Half the division pass behind the artery, the other half travel in front, and so we group them as the anterior and posterior divisions. These divisions form our cords. All three posterior divisions come together behind the artery to form the posterior cord. The upper two anterior divisions unite to form the lateral cord, and the inferior anterior division continues as the medial cord. Again, these are named after their relationship to the axillary artery. Although our illustration shows them lying above and below that artery, in reality all of these structures curve around as they enter the upper limb, leaving these cords in lateral and medial positions. Finally, these cords form the five major nerves of the upper limb. The posterior cord simply divides into axillary and radial nerves. The lateral and medial cords, however, divide and come together to form this characteristic McDonald's M shape. As soon as you see this, you are loving it because you've now found the major anterior branches of the brachial plexus. Laterally we have the musculocutaneous nerve, medially the ulnar nerve, and then between these is the median nerve. We've now seen that the brachial plexus is divided into five main regions, the roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and finally the nerve. To remember these I'd recommend coming up with a monom with a mnemon word memory thing. So, for example, you should try read those damn cadaver notes. Really tired? Drink toffee now? If you're a fellow Norfolkian, maybe running to Deerham cough nothing? Or well, why not invent your own and pop it in the comments below? I'd love to see what you come up with. So, that's an introduction to the brachial plexus. If you can remember those five major nerves and those five major regions, you'll be off to a fantastic start. As you carry on learning about the upper limb, you'll see that this isn't quite the whole picture. There are several smaller nerves that also leave the plexus. I'll be looking at those in a future video, as well as finding out what happened to those five major branches. But until then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Cheers!